Hey everyone, this is Shakti from Around the Wicket, where we not only speak about the game, but we try to learn more about the humans behind our sport. And today we have the lovely Denny Wyatt. Um, you know, she doesn't need much of an introduction. She's fun, she's cool, and yes, yeah, she plays cricket for England. Denny, thank you so much for joining me on Around the Wicket. Hi guys, thank you very much for having me. Hope you're all keeping well. So what's been happening in the UK, um, things with, um, with the lockdown, um, is the lines or are the lines still back to the car park as you've been you know, posting on your Instagram or things are easing up slightly? Yeah, things are easing slightly um, in England at minute. I've just been to the supermarket yesterday and I was only queuing for 10 minutes. So yeah, compared to a few weeks ago, I was queuing for about 45 minutes, which wow. is crazy just to get in Sainsbury's. Um, so yeah, we're still in lockdown here. We've got another nine days to go, I think, um, before our Prime Minister gives another announcement. So yeah, I'm just keeping, trying to keep busy, trying to keep my mind healthy, um, try and stay positive and keep going really and staying fit. And how are you, you know, keeping busy? Um, probably not spending... Mm -hmm that much time on TikTok like other cricketers at the moment. But what oh. have you been yeah, what have you been doing during this lockdown period? I have actually downloaded the TikTok app and I have <laughs> uploaded a few videos, but I don't think they're anything to be proud of. I've got to go check it out. <laughs> yeah. And I've been I've just been doing real life things, really like baking, cooking, um, lots of gardening. We've been really lucky with the weather. It's been really nice weather actually since lockdown, which has been a bonus. So, mm. um, yeah, I've tried to be outside as much as I can. I've been doing Pilates with oh, yes. um, Joss Butler's wife, Louise, runs an Instagram live every day at 12.30. So I've been doing Pilates every day with her, which has been really good fun and, yeah, takes your mind off things for a bit. Um, First time you've been doing Pilates or...? You've, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done it. I've, I've done Pilates now and again for like the teams I've been playing, and just but I've never had a routine to do it every day. Sure. Which like this is actually really nice for me to have a routine that I do every day. So I get up, I have breakfast, um, have a coffee for an hour, then I go and do Pilates, which is a good warm up for my gym session, or if we've got a run session planned. Um, from our S and C coach, so yeah, it's nice to have a good routine at the minute. So let's talk about cricket. Uh, you know, in a country where football is, uh, you know, the more preferred sport, when did you decide that uh, you want to become a professional cricketer? Well, it was a weird timing. I used to play football for Stoke City. Um, nice. When I was about probably eight years old, eight, nine, ten. Um, so I was probably better at football than cricket and yeah, not trying to be big Eddie, but I probably would have made a professional footballer. Yeah. I might be playing football right now if I chose football. Um, and there came a point where I think I was about 13, 14, 15 and I was so busy. So I had a, I'd have football training Monday nights, cricket Tuesday, cricket Wednesday, football. To, like I had no free time. So I had to pick football or cricket and um, I chose cricket. Just like Elise, is, Perry, uh, Elise Perry as well, who probably possibly like you, you know, possibly yeah. couldn't juggle in the times. Mm, it's a bit different over here though. So I think Australia were happy to let her play both sports, whereas here I don't think yeah. they were. Okay. Too happy about me playing football as well as cricket in case I got injured playing football. Um, and yeah, my cricket career happened all very quickly actually when um, I got picked for England on the 21s when I was 15 as a bowler. So I was a bowler back then. Yeah, wow. Um, I got what, like, a, like a pace bowler or a spin bowler? No, uh, um, off spin. Off spin? Uh, yeah, I used to open the bowling for England in my first few years of my career, bowling off spin in T20. Used to come around the wicket and just bowl the, the legs. Um, yeah, I did well actually. Got a few wickets and then um, got picked for England Academy when I was 17, 16, 17, and then got picked for England at eighteen. So it happened yeah, very, very quickly. quickly actually. 
and I never thought about the money I never thought oh I'm going to be a professional cricketer for years it just happened and yeah very grateful and I was I was actually in the first squad um the first England squad that got given the first professional contracts which was I don't know what year it was probably about six years ago now sure but before that happened I was on the MCC Young Cricketers at Lords, um, which was professional as well. So I had to live down in London mm. in the summer and train at Lords, which was unreal. And yeah, yeah I think a lot of people would like to do that. Yeah, I don't think any cricketer would complain about doing that. Um, obviously, the so, twenty. That's, that's where I met. That's where I met Arjun Tendulkar and Sachin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. some banter that I've you're having. Ar- I've known Arjun since he was about five years old yeah sure and i was just saying some um some banter that you you know you've been doing on social media with argentine and whatnot i know he's a good <laughs> kid he's a good friend of mine yeah yeah whenever he whenever i want him to bowl at me he always says he's gonna bowl fast and bowl at my head he thinks <laughs> he's rapid <laughs> i mean he is very quick yeah but yeah. he um yeah he tells me all the time I was going to say, um, you know, obviously the T20 World Cup was, uh, you know, staged here in Australia. Unfortunately, it was disappointing that uh, you guys didn't get an opportunity due to the weather. Um, and obviously, mm-hmm. it's an understatement if I say you were disappointed. But, you know, what was the reaction from the group? And looking back in hindsight, um, what do you think needs to change for some, you know, a situation like that not to happen again? Um, yeah, obviously, I think that. I don't think we'll get over that feeling for a while. That was, um, yeah, it was very bizarre, very weird, because we kind of saw it coming. Cause we, we all saw the forecast, and we all knew that there was no reserve day, so we all kind of got on the coach that morning thinking we're just going to turn up and come back home because the weather's really bad. Mm. Um, and we kind of went way, we kind of, not thought about it and just got on the coach and tried to be positive um because you never know the weather in australia can turn like that um but no it rained and rained and rained and eventually they called off um it was a weird feeling like not none of us spoke in the changing room we were just absolutely gutted and we couldn't believe we'd been knocked out of the world cup because of the rain like obviously we had to beat India anyway but um, yeah. when they're a quality team it would have been a great game a great spectacle and it was such a shame that we got knocked out because of the rain and yeah I hope no other team has to go through that again because um, yeah it was a very weird feeling actually and yeah, I think yeah. if it wasn't for this COVID-19 I think that's obviously um, on everyone's mind at the minute and it's made it's put everything in, into perspective. Uh, yeah. That they should have spare days um, in, in big tournaments like this um, to mm. at least give it another opportunity for the match to be decided by play rather than by rain. Yeah, definitely. I think there should be a reserve day after every semi final and final, whether it be T20 or 50 overs. I think there should always be a reserve day for sure. Like, yep. baffled me to. Like I didn't realise there was no reserve day until that happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the rules need to change and I think they will after what happened for sure. Yeah. And con- contrastingly, in 2017, you guys lifted the 50 over, over World Cup. Um, you know, India were cruising, um, if not for mm. Anya Shrub Soul's you know, amazing bowling performance. Tell us a, you know, a little bit about the day, um, how it panned out and what was the euphoria like after lifting the trophy? Yeah, that was one of the best days, I reckon. I don't think many days will beat that. But um, unfortunately, I was not playing that game. I was 12th man, um, which I was very disappointed about. Mm. Sidri and I had a good tournament before that, but that just showed the depth and strength we had in our squad during that World Cup. I mean, we had a great team, a great squad. Um, And just to be involved was, um, yeah, unreal. And, yeah, the celebrations after were something I'll never forget, that's for sure. Running onto the pitch, because obviously I was 12th man. Yeah. Yeah. 
So every time a wicket went, it was my job. It was me, Danny Hazel, George Rowley, Beth Langston. It was our job to run on quickly and get drinks out to the girls because it was... It actually, it was quite a cold day. It was raining as well. It was overcast, but they were still like the adrenaline. Yep. They always needed a drink quite often. So we had an important job, actually, to make sure they were all feeling good and hydrated. And um, it was a long day. Like, it was seven, eight hours long. And, um, yeah, it's a lot of sitting around for us, drinking teas and coffee. <laughs> and in the second innings... Obviously, Lords is a great place because they, they do great food at lunch, so it was actually not a bad place to be 12th man because I could eat more than the players. <laughs> um, yeah, the food is outstanding. Um, anyway, in the second innings, when Anya Shrubs all came on and got all those wickets, we played a game called Cake Ball. So, Kate, if a player shouts Cake Ball that's on the bench, it means you think there's going to be a wicket. <laughs> And if you get it right, everyone that, that plays the game has to buy you cake and tea the next day. <laughs> um, so anyway, I called three of Anya's wicket. Yeah. So you called, I called so you had three a lot cake, of cake balls. Yeah. Well, no, the girls still, they haven't bought me the cake. I think one person did. So are you they still to, owe me? I still bring yeah. up, they still owe me a lot of cake. You might want to consider the choice of your teammates, you know. <laughs> they can't give you cake after that. One person one person bought me the cake and that's the physio, so <laughs> um so yeah, and I don't know if you remember the drop catch that Jenny gone. So India were nine wickets down. And um I can't remember who the batter was, I think it might have been Pooh now. She lofted it to Jenny Gunn at mid-on, like the easiest catch ever that my nan would have caught it. Then she just dropped it. And that was to win the World Cup. And we were like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. I'd already ran on the pitch thinking we'd won the World Cup. So then I had to go and run back to my seat. Um, and I was like, oh. And then India only needed about eight to win, I think, as well. Yeah, so they not, could have actually yeah, won that. Um, and then I think the next ball, Anya Boulder. And yeah, we all ran on the pit full yeah. of jubilation. And yeah, that feeling was something I've never had before like running on the pitch thinking we're the best team in the world. We just won the World Cup, was an, an amazing feeling. Yeah, it would have been amazing. I'll, I'll break the interview with uh, a couple of questions. Uh, actually, this is a three truths about you and one false statement. Okay, so you have to pick up. Okay. Which one is the false statement? So the first statement is you have between 180,000 to 181,000 followers on Instagram. The second statement is you have 10 50 plus scores in both T20 internationals and one days combined. You have played 183 one day internationals and T20 combined. That's the third statement. And the fourth statement is you once posted a photo of you sweeping to which because Vendra Chahal wrote 66666, and your reply was, if you were bowling, yes. What do I have to do? Answer which one's true? Uh, which one is false? Um, do you want me to say them again? The third one. You have played 183 one-day internationals and T20s combined? Oh, no, that's true. Maybe the second one? Which one do you choose Denny. I reckon oh if your life depended on it. So you well, have ten so it's between it's between two, right? Two and three you said. You have ten fifty plus scores in T twenty internationals and one day is combined or you have played one hundred and eighty three one day internationals and T twenties combined. Oh I don't know. To guess probably number two. Correct. You're right. You have made 11 50 plus scores in T20s. Oh, yay. Yes. Including 300s, I think. 300s? Two in yes, T20s. Yes, one. Yeah. One yeah. in one day. Now, the second question is a multiple choice question. Who has the most T20 international runs out of these four cricketers? A, Danny White. B, Beth Mooney. C, Ben Stokes. Or D, K. L. Rahul. So who has the most T20 international runs out of these four players? 
Do you know how many you have? A thousand. More than a thousand. Thirteen hundred. You have fifteen hundred and eighty-eight runs. Oh wow! Yeah, that's cool. So, um, I'll go with K. Al Rahul. D. Uh, the answer is Danny White. Oh <gasps> yes. You have more runs than all of these guys. Beth oh, Mooney wow. has 1,452. Ben Stokes has only 305. Uh, surprising, but he comes lower down the order anyways. And yeah. Rahul has 1,400 odd runs. So, yeah, you have more international T20 runs than all of them. Cool. That's nice to know. And, you know, talking about T20s, you are playing a lot of domestic T20 franchise leagues across the globe. Um, how has mm. the experience been playing in so many different leagues and, you know, interacting with so many different types of players? Oh, it's amazing. I love playing abroad and playing in different teams. Um, the Big Bash is probably the best league in the world. Um, yeah, Cricket Australia look after. They've got a great setup at the minute. Um, they've got I think they contract all of their state players as well. So yeah. the people coming into the Australia squad are already professional, which they're trying to do in England as well. So that'll be um, very useful and a huge step for women's cricket as well if that happened in England. And I was going to um, say, you, you talked about Big Bash. Um, you spent a lot of time with the Renegades. Um, yeah. How has your experience been? You've played some important and vital knocks for them as well in the in the past mm. few years. Yeah, how, yeah, how, how, how was the experience? I've made Big Bash finals twice now. The last two years I've been there, which has been an amazing achievement. And um, I was actually in, I actually made the team of the year. Yeah, team of the year. Um, yeah. After my performances last year, which was a huge achievement, and got a little trophy as well to say nice. well done. Um, yeah, I think for me to be playing with and against some of the best players in the world um, benefits me a lot. And to be playing in Australia as well with those conditions, it's so different to playing mm. in England or India. Like everywhere you play, it's a different country, so different. Um, yeah. So to have that experience as well, and like going to the other side of the world on your own. Um, you're on your own in the apartment you stay in. Um, you start to learn more about yourself as well as a person and as a player, which is very important as well. So, yeah, all my good times have when I've been touring and being around a different group of friends, making friends all across the world is a big reason why I play cricket. Yeah. You must be proud about, um, you know, the popularity of the women's game now um, it's in un mm. unprecedented times you know the viewership is up 86,000 plus crowd uh, at the final of the of the T20 World Cup what do you think has contributed um, to the popularity rising so much for women's game yeah that final was hard for me to watch because I yeah. wish I was playing in it but it was amazing to mm. see a sellout crowd at the MCG um, because I think back to when I played at the MCG in the Ashes against Australia in 2013, I think it was, or before that, um, 2011 maybe, and there was literally five people in the crowd. So to think, what, nearly 10 years on, to have 86,000 people um, is just unreal, to be fair, and unheard yeah. of, and I'm... So happy to see how far the women's game has come. You talked about the Ashes. Unfortunately, you guys didn't have that good a series uh, last time mm -hmm. you played Australia. Uh, what do you feel that the team could have improved on during that Ashes series? Yeah, um, that was probably the toughest part of most of our careers last summer in the Ashes. Uh, we just couldn't find a way to even win. I think we had the ODIs first. Yeah, we had the ODIs first. And the first two ODIs were very close. Like we were yeah. so close to um, winning. We could have easily won those two games and we just couldn't win. And then we had the last ODI at Canterbury where Elise Perry got seventh. Um, 
Yeah, she was actually swinging it away against the slope. So there's a big slope at Canterbury. Mm-hmm. And I remember she got me LBW that was probably out. Um, but yeah, it was she she was on fire that day, to be fair to her. Mm. Um, and yeah, they were just too good for us on the day. And we couldn't get the win in the test match. And then they beat us. Meg Lanning got the 100 in the first T20. Um, and then we, we won the last T20. And we said before that game, we had a big team, we had a big players meeting and we said, we just want to go out there and do our families proud and yeah. play for England and go out there and play with a smile on her face. I've got nothing to lose. And we went and won quite comfortably. So that was nice to finish on a high. But um, yeah, we probably learned a lot of ourselves and as a team throughout that Ashes yeah. series for sure. On an individual level, um, like I was saying before, that you have made two T20 international mm-hmm. hundreds. Um, you know, not even in the men's game, many people can get you know two T20 international hundreds. Uh, what goes into breaking down an innings um, in the in the short form? Do you know what? I probably didn't think about anything in both of those innings. So the first hundred I got in Australia. Uh, Mark Robinson, the coach at the time, he promoted me from six to opening. And I think it was the second. So the first T20 of the Asher series, I got 50, but in at six. Yeah. And no one else got any runs. And then he promoted me to opening in the second T20. And I got about 18 off 10 balls. And then the, there was the last T20 where I got the 100. And. Um, I remember we lost Tammy Beaumont, Sarah Taylor, Nat Siver quite quickly. So we were struggling. We were about 20 for three. And I remember I couldn't really connect with the ball in the first six overs. I must, I think I was on like 20 or 20 balls. I was probably yeah, struggling. Yeah. And then I um, got dropped off Molly Strano Healy. I don't know how she dropped it. I was on 18 at the time. So I took that chance and um, I don't know, it just, the ball just came out of the middle. Every ball I hit, um, I backed myself, ran hard, played with intent. And before I knew it, I was on 95. And I looked at the scoreboard and I said to Heather and I, to, I was batting with it at the time, I was like, Trev, I'm on, she's called Trev, Hev. I was like, I'm on 95, what's going on? And then that's when I started getting nervous. Um, I remember hitting Jonathan over extra cover. Great shot, actually, into out. Um, it was a great wicket, by the way, at Canberra. Yeah. It was an absolute row. Um, Monica so, Oval. Really yeah. Frost, yeah, Monica Oval. Yeah. And then I was on 99, and at this point, I was so nervous. I was like, this is when I started thinking. Because before <laughs> that, I was not nervous one bit. And then um, Elise Perry came on to bowl, and I was like, oh, no. If she bowls it straight here, I'm out, because I'm so nervous that like, I just froze. Um, and luckily she bowled me a short wide one and I literally just stuck my bat out and it went out to cover and I got a single and I was like, oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that feeling was a feeling of relief and yeah, because before all my years before that, I've probably had, I've had the talent, but I've never shown it on a, like in a, on a big mm-hmm. stage. So to do it in an ashes as well. Um, nice. And to draw, because we drew the Ashes that day. If we won that, we drew the Ashes. But I think the Aussies retained it. But we can still yeah. say we drew the Ashes in Australia. Yeah. Um, Amazing, and then yeah. to back it up with another 100 in India two games later. Yeah, in Mumbai. In Mumbai, where my dad was watching as well. He was in the crowd. Um, yeah, that was another great wicket. And I just I had in my head that I was going to smack every ball. And I was just so confident. Um, then yeah, I batted very well that game actually. 124 of 60 balls, which wow, yeah, is unreal. It's Everyone, yeah. every batter wants those days, but they yeah, don't come yeah. around very often, so you have to enjoy them when they do. Nice, we have a second break just before we come to the conclusion part of the interview. Uh, these are five rapid fire questions, uh, and mm-hmm. the first one is Who's your favorite football team in, in England? Port Vale. Favourite cricketer, male or female? Doesn't matter. 
Ben Stokes. What will you do after finishing cricket? Mm, IPL commentator. Nice. Isha go home. Move, move, up, move away. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your most annoying teammate? Um, Sophie Eccleston. And who's the funniest teammate? Sophie Eccleston. Sophie Eccleston's for both. Nice. This is not related to the, you know, the women's game, but it was mm -hmm. a big, big summer for English cricket last last summer. Um, oh, my! Nice. Obviously, and obviously the World Cup for the first time in England. Mm -hmm won the World Cup and at home. Um, you know, how was that feeling for the entire nation uh, to lift up that World Cup for the first time? So I have a funny story. I was actually at the Men's World Cup final because I wasn't involved in the test squad during the yeah. Ashes. So, you know, the saying every cloud has a silver lining, that meant that I could actually go to the Men's final at Lord's. So I managed to get a couple of tickets from ECB. Nice. And oh, it was I've got the video, I filmed myself celebrating. <laughs> and it went viral actually, it was on BBC Sport and everything. Um yeah, I can't believe we won that game. Well, wow, there were so many twists and Ups turns. And downs, yeah. Like Ben Stokes, what a legend, but the way he batted that game and in front of a sellout crowd as well, like that moment and that game changed. Yeah. Um, the game for sure in England, like so many people watched that game. Even people that have never heard of cricket um, came up to me and was like, oh yeah, the men, they won that game, didn't they? They won the final. They won the World Cup final. Like Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was playing cricket in the street. Everyone wanted to play cricket and join a club. And that moment, um, yeah, it's those moments that you'll remember yeah. all your life. I think we were watching here till 4 a.m. in the morning. So, yeah. We? And, and, you know, we're not, we don't like, like the English men's team here in Australia, but we still no. you know, rode, rode the ups and downs of that game and felt as nervous as anyone. Um, yeah, you guys were supporting the Kiwi. <laughs> yeah, that's what we <laughs> here. Go for anyone against England. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. you, you've been featured in the um, children's, in the children's book as well. Um, can mm. you talk more about you know, that, that venture? Yeah, so um, Mark Wood texted me, fellow England cricketer. Um, he messaged me and asked if my name can be in a um, book. He didn't really tell me much about it. He just said um, it's a children's book. Um, and my friend, the author, uh, Bill Clegg, um, would like it if you could um, feature in the book. It's like a little children's story. Um, and as soon as he said, all proceeds go to the NHS, because they're doing a fantastic job over here. Yeah. I said yes straight away. So it's got sports stars like Jordan Henderson, who's the Liverpool yeah. captain. Liverpool, yeah. Um, plays for England, Danny Wilbeck, Jack Wiltshire. And then it's got three uh, rugby stars in it as well. Um, and then me, Joe Root and Mark Wood from Cricket. So it's a little story. Um, about a team of birds it's really cute and they're an underdog team and they basically just come around to all of us sports stars and get advice about how to best play cricket how to play rugby how to play football and then they go away and um, yeah it's got beautiful illustrations and they go away and work hard as a team um, stick together and then they do a lot better than they did in the past so um, yeah, it's great to be a part of it and honoured as well to be supporting a great cause. And where do where where do we find out more information about this so that you know the proceeds so can the, the, book, NHS? the book is available on Amazon for only three pound ninety nine and all the money goes towards the NHS. Um it's only available on like your Kindle at the minute, so it's called an yep. ebook. Um, because obviously all the shops and yeah, warehouses yeah. are closed at the minute, but they are going to release an actual book um, nice. in the future. So yeah, if you go on Amazon or um, anywhere online and Google it. What's next for Danny White? Um, you know, you've played cricket for a long, long time. Um, there will always be 
uh, an expiry date or an end date to your cricket career, but what what do you feel is next for you? Um, yeah, I still feel I've got a few more years to go, and yeah, this is not ideal for my career, this stall in the cricket season, but hopefully mm -hmm. we can get a series in September against India and South Africa and cram it all in um, one month, which will be great and it'll be fantastic for everyone involved. Um, so hopefully that will go ahead. And yeah. then hopefully I'll be able to play in the IPL and in the Big Bash before the 50th World Cup in February, March, which is in New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... I reckon, and I've got hopes that all the cricket will be at the back end of our summer and into the winter. Um, so we've just got to stay fit and healthy and be ready for that. And one final question, Jenny. Um, all the young cricketers that are coming up, especially females, um, you know, they're, cricket's a global game, but it doesn't get played in many countries if um, you know if I may say and there are a lot of females that don't actually but in terms of participation there's still a big difference between male and females uh, picking up cricket if there's one message that you have for any young female cricketer who wants to take this profession uh, or this path what would you say to them um, I always say to any girl growing up to make sure they play boys cricket so make sure you play with the boys so I used to well, I still do play at Whitmore Cricket Club just down the road. It's a local club. Um, and my older brother got me into cricket and I played boys cricket up until, well, I still do now. And you just learn a lot more um, from playing with the boys. So obviously, they bowl faster. They um, hit the ball harder. So you learn quickly. Yeah. You learn to see the standard that you should be at. And yeah. That was really benefited me playing with the boys, and I still play men's cricket there when I can as well. So I recommend that you play boys cricket and to make sure you enjoy it and um, play with a smile on your face because there's no point doing it if you're not going to enjoy it. Make sure you enjoy every moment of it. Awesome, Denny. Thank you so much uh, for your time on Around the Wicket. Pleasure chatting to you all things cricket and for you being very honest as well to us. Uh, hopefully we can chat sometime in the future. Um, all the best for the upcoming cricket season whenever it does start and all the best for the World Cup next year as well. Thank you very much for having me, Shakti. Really appreciate it, Denny. Thank you.